Hello everyone. Welcome to SFCCA's first video of From the Desk. And uh, these videos will be coming out periodically on various FCC topics. And this is because of numerous requests that I've received from my network to come out with such videos. Uh, please feel free to send me an email, you know, or, or, or via a LinkedIn message that, uh, you know, that you want a particular topic covered by a video and I'm happy to look at it. So today what we're going to talk about is the Deloitte South Asia survey of August 2020 which basically covers off banks and financial institutions in India and Sri Lanka and Bangladesh. I'm not going to discuss the entire survey. I'm only going to talk about three points from that survey. So the first important point is that there is a need for a consolidated view of customer information, right? So customer information, not just across line of business, but also across jurisdictions. So yes, this is incredibly important and uh, it's important also to understand the history behind this regulatory expectation. So how do we arrive at this point? So let's look back at the Citibank OCC consent order of 2012, which is the first indication of this regulatory expectation. And I'm going to read out from that consent order. So the consent order talks of cities inability to assess and monitor client relationships on a bank wide basis. It requires them to collect information regarding the client's relationships with the bank, all lines of business within the bank and all bank subsidiaries. This includes accounts within other lines of business regions and countries as permitted by jurisdiction. As Deloitte says, make it difficult for criminals to exploit gaps between business systems, databases and countries. So it should be obvious to the listeners that, uh, you know, this, this brings, brings about, uh, this invokes numerous data privacy considerations, right? So depending on the jurisdiction you're operating in. So some of the smart banks have, have a clause in their uh, KYC terms and conditions, which basically states that you can share information cross border for the purposes of risk management. In case you don't have that for the purposes of, uh, you know, managing that particular situation, you know, for legacy accounts, you could ask for a negative confirmation from your client, which means that if you don't respond by such and such date, we will assume that we have your consent for sharing of information. Obviously that system of negative confirmation does not work in every country. So in some countries you will be required to take a positive confirmation, a written confirmation from a client, that, that you can share the information cross-border for the purposes of risk management. In, in any case, assuming you have all these in place, you know, so you either have the clause, the negative confirmation or the positive confirmation, it may still be a requirement in jurisdictions, in certain jurisdictions like Korea, for example, to take specific regulatory approval for the purposes of sharing of information for risk management. And it's always a good idea to inform your regulator prior to any uh, sort of, uh, you know, material sharing of information for risk management purposes. And, and, and that's the best way to go about it. Let's talk a little bit about Singapore. So uh, the MAS, of course, is a progressive regulator that uh, in principle supports the sharing of information for risk management purposes. That, however, does not mean that there is a blanket approval for sharing of such information and neither does it mean that you could do this without adequate safeguards in place. So what are these safeguards? There are specific outsourcing guidelines which are applicable. So, you know, the first set is the July 2016 guidelines and the second set is the July 2020, which is, which is specifically applicable to CMIs, so capital market intermediaries for AML CFT. So both these sets of guidelines are important and applicable. And if you're, if you're, in, if you're going to undertake material outsourcing uh, for the purposes of risk management, say for example, first level alert review, right? Then you have to adhere to all data protection requirements of Singapore, right? And uh, even if you're using cloud services, that's regarded as outsourcing. So you have to maintain an outsourcing register and a copy of that register needs to be shared with the MAS on an annual basis and also on their specific request. So if you intend to undertake material outsourcing for the purposes of risk management, 
it's always a good idea to inform the MAS so that they can have the opportunity to request you to prove your compliance with their guidelines on outsourcing. Now let's look at the other point coming out of the Deloitte report, which is the importance of taking a holistic view, right? The holistic view of risk management. So we look at money laundering, fraud and cybersecurity in a holistic manner. It's important to understand that data leaks will typically involve an insider, and this could be an employee or it could be a malicious contractor, right? And sphere phishing is the preferred method of making a user compromise uh, you know, on their information. And this could be, for example, with the right timing, uh, with the right message and a moments of distraction. It's fairly easy to make a user, no matter how, how sophisticated, sophisticated he is, uh, you know, give up his personal information. So it's important to understand that uh, as, as far as uh, these requests for you know, personal information, your account has been compromised, kindly update your password, etc. Uh, we should not be lured by these uh, sort of messages, no matter how realistic they look. We should not, um, we should not reset our passwords uh, on, 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 on malicious websites. We should use two-factor authentication and even turn on three-factor authentication if we have that option. We should not click on attachments uh, from emails, which uh, you know induce us to open that attachment. And uh, there, there may be malware in that attachment, which will then uh, sort of uh, be used to steal your login information. And uh, for example, it could potentially send emails to the accounts department, asking them to do an urgent funds transfer uh, to uh, XYZ account. And uh, obviously, if uh, you don't have in your small business, you don't have uh, the, the requisite callback procedures, the callback pr uh, protocols, then you're going to make a huge loss. Uh, you know, money will leave your uh, your bank account uh, thanks to sphere phishing. So it's important from uh, the perspective of the banks uh, to to share guidance. And certainly, uh, one very good uh, resource is the US FTC. October 2016 uh, guidance and uh, you know their guidance is on uh, protecting personal information uh, a guide for businesses for business we also have the FSB or the financial stability boards right consultative document of April 2020 titled effective practices for cyber incident response and recovery so they cover 46 effective practices, which basically map off before, during, and after a cyber incident. They, they offer seven components for cyber resilience, which covers governance, preparation, analysis, mitigation, restoration, improvement, coordination, and communication. So at the Outset, it's, it's very important to be able to stop threats, which, uh, for example, come through your firewalls, for example, come in emails. So, you know, sphere phishing emails with malicious attachments, which exploit zero day vulnerabilities. Uh, as an organization, we have to be able to stop that. We have to be able to stop uh, users. We have to have the right cybersecurity culture. We have to be able to stop users from uh, changing their passwords online from some realistic uh, uh, looking email which they receive. We should test all software which is introduced, whether it's software that we purchased, or even if it's software that we've uh, you know, developed internally for vulnerabilities. So you could have a malicious employee who's deliberately left some vulnerabilities in the software. Physical security of the data center is important. Offline backups of data are important. Encryption of data, whether it's at rest or in motion is important. Uh, software patches are important. Timely antivirus updates, timely anti-malware updates, user access management, password management, uh, and even three-factor authentication for critical systems, but you know, systems, for example, access to customer data or uh, administrative accounts, right? Uh, other controls could include things like segregation of duties, 
dual control on passwords, net network security devices, penetration testing of firewalls, next generation firewalls, cyber recovery testing, all these are critical controls. Uh, I'm going to ask the, the, the viewers to look at the MAS notice uh, 1118 on cyber hygiene. And this was issued in August 2019. And this is specific to merchant banks. So going back to the Deloitte report, uh, the Deloitte report also talks, uh, you know, and this is the third point that I'm picking up about a shortage of trained, you know, a properly adequately trained AML CFD staff. And, uh, you know, when we say train, we mean uh, not just an understanding, uh, a broad understanding of AML CFD, but a specific understanding of red flags, uh, you know, a case study focus. And, and obviously that's something that uh, SFCCA can help you with. This is something that we do for our bread and butter. And uh, our, our training programs are all via e-learning. And, uh, and certainly at the moment, we have two certifications in private banking. Uh, at the compliance officer, middle office, uh, middle office and compliance officer level, and uh, and separately the associate level for relationship managers. So the professional level is the, is the compliance officer level. So please do look at our website www.sfcca.com.sg, and uh, we look forward to having inquiries, uh, training inquiries from you, either for your institution or for yourselves. Thank you.